All right, my name is Shawnee Lang, and I did my fungi presentation on Heracium arenaceus, also known as lion's mane. There are a few common names for Heracium arenaceus, and those are lion's mane, bearded tooth, monkey head, bear's head, old man's beard, hedgehog, pom pom, and yamabushitake, which is Japanese for mountain priest mushroom. In my presentation, I'm going to go over the following. I'm going to go over the description of Lion's Mane, life history, the habitat, ecology, some case studies, and some more fun things. So I decided to do Lion's Mane because I take it. This is the one that I take every day, um, two capsules a day, and I also try to take a couple other mushroom supplements on my morning drinks and I really just wanted to learn more about it. I only knew right what it says on the bottle that it supports memory in your nerves so I wanted to kind of get a deeper understanding about some brain function and other great qualities of this mushroom. As you can see lion's mane is a very gorgeous fungi when it's young, it's pretty white, and as it ages, it gets more yellowish brown. It's this bulbous mushroom that looks very toothed, and it's composed of downward cascading non-forking spines. In the wild, it can grow up to 40 centimeters. Their spores are white, and the mycelium is very rich and sweet. Once known as the mountain priest, Lion's mane has been a part of Asian culture and traditional Chinese medicine long before it was introduced to the West. Its first cultivation was reported in 1988, and it was used in traditional Chinese medicine specifically for treating stomach and digestive problems, including cancers. They were also used as a general restorative due to their anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and immunomodulating properties. It is nutritional for all five internal organs, the liver, spleen, lungs, heart, and kidney. It is widely known for the brain health and immune support. And I was shocked to find out that it was high in vitamin D and protein, as well as there being potassium and iron. So here is a little bit of a diagram to Showed that lion's mane actually kind of looks like a brain. Um, and also identifying that there are many benefits, as I said before on the previous slide, improving brain health, fights anxiety and depression, supports immune response, it's an anti inflammatory, supports heart health and good circulation, supports fat burning and healthy metabolism, it stabilizes blood sugar levels, improves digestive health anti-cancer properties, and it improves energy levels. Here's a quote from the man, uh, Paul Stamets, saying, Lion's mane may be our first smart mushroom. It is a safe, edible fungus that appears to confer cognitive benefits on our aging population. I also included a little link to a YouTube talk that he did on his Thoughts on lion's mane and all those benefits. So lion's mane tends to flourish in the fall, typically around 65, 75 degrees in moist settings. They grow from deciduous hardwood trees, especially those that are dead or decaying. They're commonly found on maple, birch, beech, and oak trees, mostly on logs and stumps, and they're widely seen throughout the temperate regions of North America, Europe, and Asia. As I mentioned before, this mushroom can be parasitic, found on living trees, especially oak, maple, and beech, and it is saprotrophic, found on decaying hardwoods, and the season is normally from August to November, and it is obviously an edible mushroom belonging to the tooth fungus group. There have been many studies on lion's mane, especially regarding these two topics for cognitive enhancement and the reduction of depression and anxiety. 
and I wanted to share briefly about two of them. Uh, one study in 2009 took a group of 50 to 80 year old women and men with mild cognitive impairment in order to study the effects of ingesting lion's mane. The group of subjects were randomized into two 15 person groups. One group was given four tablets of 250 milligrams of lion's mane three times per day, which is three grams total, while the other group was given a placebo or non-active tablet. Neither the group nor the researchers were told which group was taking the active and non-active tablets to ensure there was a no bias in data collection. Four individuals ingested their tablets daily for 16 weeks and were evaluated on their cognitive function at set intervals. The subjects were also studied for an additional four weeks after the termination of tablet ingestion period to see if any significant improvements ceased with the end of the ingestion. Uh, for the test, the subjects had two weeks of preliminary examination to provide a baseline for their cognitive function, which was determined using a dementia scale. It is a question and answer based test that starts as simple as asking the age in the day or year, but quickly ramps up to more challenging tasks such as recounting digits presented by the tester in rever reverse order or recalling the name of objects in a specific order presented by the tester and other challenging memory tests. In results, at weeks 8, 12, and 16 of the trial, the lines mean adjusting group had significantly increased scores on cognitive function scale compared with the placebo group. Even more each testing week, the test scores increased with each passing week, showing the lines mean had an increasing effect over time. The test results for the four weeks following termination of the ingestion showed that without ingesting the lion's mane, the improvements had significantly dwindled. So even in amounts as little as three grams per day, which is about one to two teaspoons of powder, subjects had significant increases in their cognitive function. Even more interestingly, the effect increased more over time. It's unclear just how soon the effects began as the first measurement was done at eight weeks, about halfway through the study. Also, it is unclear whether or not it was just an extract of lion's mane or just dried powder. But either way, really well done research and one of the best examples. There was another study in 2010 about reduction of depression and anxiety. And the study was aiming to find lion's mane effects on menopause, depression, and sleep quality. They used a similar design utilizing a double blind and placebo controlled format. This study pulled from a subject group of 60 females of varying ages. Half of the subjects were randomly assigned to consume an active form of lion's mane and the other half a non-active placebo form. Both for four weeks, the lion's mane was pressed into cookies each containing about 500 milligrams or 0.5 grams of the fruiting body and subjects consumed four cookies a day. The study wanted to find out the effects on lines mean on menopause, depression, sleep quality, and indefinite complaints. Tests were measured utilizing menopausal index, the Center for Depression Scale, the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, and the Indefinite Complaints Index. These results showed that the group ingesting the lion's mane had significantly lower scores in the depression and indefinite complaints tests and that feelings or irritation and anxiety tended to be lower than the placebo group. Sleep quality tended to improve but was reported to not be statistically significant. So this study did use 33% less lion's mane than the first study and still had significant results. They measured a significant amount of variables with different indexes and scales from ranging from depression to sleep to menopausal and complaints. This is more robust than one single test as in the first study and the completion of a scientific study is a lot of work. So the more data one could collect, the better. Um, the study was a lot shorter compared to the first for four weeks compared to 16 weeks, but it did show that a lot of people benefited from taking lion's mane. I also wanted to include, similarly to what we were doing in class, just if you were interested in 
growing lines mean at home. I provided a really fun link with a cool video that shows how to do that and has also some pretty cool information about lion's mane. I have yet to cook with lion's mane, but um, here's some nutritional information. And let me know if you have found any. I am sure maybe the farmer's market might be a place to go. And I've gotten other cool mushroom resources from there before. But here is a link to some cool recipes that I want to try and maybe you can try too. Lion's mane is known to either have a sweet or tart flavor and be pretty seafood-like. So if you're into that, definitely recommend trying to cook with it. There is a lot more. I am excited to learn about Heresium arenaceus, also known as lion's mane. And thank you for listening to what I had to say.